This weekend, I had lunch with an engineer, and she asked me if her company, where she works, is actually a good invest investment because she gets shares from that company. So I made her Google the company that she works for and Obermott, and she found the page where our analysis is displayed. And the first question that she asked was, what does it mean, good value? And that's actually a really important question. And it helped me decide to explain the value rank in more detail, which is what we're going to do today. Now, there is one important principle for the value rank, and that is companies of similar price, no, companies of similar size should have a similar price. So this is really important. Companies of similar size should actually have a similar price. Why should you pay more if you can get the same cheaper? Now, the fact is, a lot of companies at the stock markets violate this principle. Some prices are much higher than the company size, and some prices are lower. Let's look at the reasons together. The key is now to measure size. And at Obermott, we only measure size based on financial facts. So how do we do that? One way of finding out the size of a company is to look at its revenues. How much money do they make for selling their products? Revenues, indication of size. Now, companies want to make a profit with that revenue. We can also look at the profit they make with selling their products. And in order to produce those products, most companies need capital that they have invested in machines or in their brand. Let's call that, let's put that round because it's a little bit different from these other two numbers. This is called invested capital. Now, the profit doesn't help much if it stays in the company. Many companies decide to pay you a dividend. And the size of the dividend is again, again an indicator of overall size. Now, when you look at a company of that size, you would expect that this company has roughly about the same price. Now, as we know, some companies are more expensive, so their market price is a lot higher. And some companies are cheaper, so their market price is lower. Companies that are really expensive, like this one, receive a low Obermott value rank. So this is confusing. It's just the other way around. Expensive companies get a low value rank at Obermott. The lowest one is one. And companies that are cheap getting a high value rank because you get a lot of value for the money you invest. The biggest value rank, let's put it down here, is 100. When you look at all this, you may come to the conclusion the stock market is nuts because why should they have all these different prices? Now, there is actually a reason for it. Because market prices don't reflect what's in the past. You're not buying the past of a company. You buy, you buy the future of a company. So a company that grows a lot, you know, actually should have a bigger price than a company that grows, that maybe even shrinks to a lower size. So the higher price makes sense if a company has a bright future, and the low price makes sense if the company has a difficult future. And the upper mod value ranks gives you the information how high that price is in a very simple rank from 1 to 100. And this now forms your investment challenge. You have to decide for a company that has a low value rank if the future of that company is really that bright. Is it really one of the best futures and that's why it's the most expensive one and provides the lowest value rank? And vice versa, if you have a company with a high value rank, that actually means the market expects this company to not grow anymore or to grow a lot less than other investment opportunities. And you have to decide, is this justified? You know, is that low price justified by a really bad future? Let's look at a couple of, couple of examples. Let's assume this typical company, this typical valuation is, is really just the average of the 
whole industry, it gets a value rank of 50. Let's assume we have here a company that has a value rank of 75 and a company that has a value rank of 33. What does that mean, basically? A value rank of 33 means this company has to be in the top third in the future in order to justify that low value rank and vice versa. If you have a company that has a value rank of 75, you know, it could be anywhere here and it would be a good investment and only if it's even worse than the 25% worst companies, it's not justified. So what you have to do is you have to use these value ranks as an indication of what the market expects of the future. It expects a, a top you know, third performance. It expects the lowest quartile performance, the least 25%, the lowest 25%. And relate that assessment of the market to what you expect yourself of the future. So if you come to the conclusion this company with a very high value rank of 75 will have a normal future, nothing spectacular bad and also not something spectacular good. You know, it means this company should actually have a value rank of 50 and it's a good investment opportunity. So remember, you always need two things. You need the Obermott value rank and you need your expectations about the future. And if you think a good a company with a good Obermott value rank has an average or even above average future, it's a good reason to invest. And if you think a company with a low Obermott value rank has a normal future, it's a good reason to sell. That's how I do it. I look at the companies that have good Obermott value rank when I want to buy stocks. I look at these companies, I see they have a good value rank and I know something must be wrong with those companies, otherwise they wouldn't be cheap. So I look for the issues of those companies. And I think, in the, and if I come to the conclusions, there are no issues or the issues are minor or temporary, it's a good reason to buy. And when I sell stocks, I do the opposite. I look at companies with low Obermott value ranks. I don't necessarily sell them right away, I look at their future. If I come to the conclusion that these companies with low Obermott value ranks have an average future, then this is a good reason to sell. If they have a very bright future, maybe the low Obermott value rank is justified. With that approach, you have a big advantage. You, cre you create your own investment story. And this is an advantage because that story has not been told many times. It's your own story and you are the one who can benefit from it. So we did three things. We explained what Obermott value ranks are and I showed you how I work with the Obermott value ranks and I gave you the reason why you should work with value ranks too. 